G'day, welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content on my channel. If you missed the last video, the uh, tea nuts for the new milling table. It's a link up there now, you can go watch that first. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to uh, make something that I've been wanting to make for a while and now that I've got all sorts of things I didn't have before and that thing that just arrived in the mail. Uh, I'm going to make uh, something I've wanted to do for, for quite a while. So follow me out over the bench and we'll see what's in that package and, uh, and get on with it. Alrighty. Now, uh, despite that little bit of melodrama that uh, I had at the beginning of the video, I actually had to go to the post office and pick this up. And uh, for the very, very first time, uh, I bought this from AliExpress uh, with funds donated by my very kind patrons. Thank you very much to them. I had to pay import duty and sales tax on the damn thing i was really surprised the postman showed up at the gate yesterday with uh well a copy of this telling me i had to go to the post office and pick the damn thing up and i get it there this morning and, and i say here yeah, here's your 301 baht and he said oh, i was 321 why always oh, 20 baht for the post office <laughs> get on you first time i've ever struck that stuff this box is a bit, uh, a bit bloody flimsy yeah but uh I'd truly like to thank my patrons for uh, stumping up the cash a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit every month that, that's paid for this. And there it is, the Precision Vice. First one I've bought of any description. So I've got my uh, two other vices that I built myself and, uh, and this one. Now, you might be wondering what's this got to do with making uh, turning tools or, or insert tools well this is what I'm going to make it from uh, one my my tool holders for the lathe will take a half inch shank which is what that is but the uh, but I was thinking about making a, uh, a new tool for the fly cutter as well but I may not do that yet but anyway what I want to use this for is I want to mount that to uh, to the rotary table that I made to get me the angles that I need to use these tips So I need it to get it round to get the angle to cut that angle in there and then I need it to cut the seven or eight degree angle back this way where the tip sits so that's what I'm going to use this for so we'll get it all set up and we'll see how we go alrighty now before I uh, can use this damn thing I'll have to make myself some clamps for it so I think I'll knock a couple of pieces off the end of this and uh, just machine very quickly machine up a couple of clamps I originally had in mind using these but they're all they're too long so I'm going to do that first I definitely have to do something about, um, that's a terrible finish on there, extending these slots so I can bolt this damn thing down front and back. Because the weird looking finish on here, it's almost suggesting that, the, that this is rotten. You know, because it's only bolted in the centre. Anyway, I, uh, I remembered that I had a piece of three quarter square up on, the, up on my uh, rack up there. So I decided I couldn't be bothered cutting up uh, that other piece of stuff. So I'm just going to make it out of this. Got to uh, take 10 millimeters out of this. Right, I'll get that out of there.
Alrighty, so that's that side of it done. I'll just set it up, chamfer those, and then cut it in half, dress it up a bit. Alrighty, so I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. Uh, just gave them a quick lick on the uh, belt sander to clean them up. I've tightened that one down on there, it locks it up nice and solid. I might uh, blue them and then soak them some oil overnight and get back into this tomorrow. Oh, dickhead. Roll sound. Roll. Sound production, take two. Alrighty, I've messed around with that long enough. It's about a hundred. I had it absolutely spot on and uh, press record to wind that in and out and wound the wrong handle. But anyway, so uh, now I shall get the uh, piece I want to machine set up in there and we'll wind this around 120 degrees. Alrighty, so if my uh, markings on here are even close to being right uh, and I've marked 12 10 degree divisions around here then that line should end up straight across here when I'm done that's 10 20 30 oh loosen that clamp off a bit more oh it's going on there it's only 30 degrees and it's straight across <laughs> never was much of a mathematician I don't know what's going on there like I said never was much of a mathematician but that looks pretty much straight across to me so uh, that's where I'll leave it and I'll lock it back up there alrighty just had to take daughter into town and uh, I had a bit of an epiphany on the way in there uh, about that why I only had to move that 30 degrees because 90 and 30 makes 120 <laughs> never really thought about it like that before but anyway now uh, I've only got to take two and a half millimeters out of this so it won't take much machining uh, it's not really the right cutter, it's the only medium cutter, but it's the only decent 8mm tool I've got. I'm going to use that. Well, that's me down to dirt, and the cut I just made and the line I scribed look fairly parallel, so we'll work our way across to it. these things these tips they've got a six or seven degree slope on here so I don't want to just leave it sit up hard against a square shoulder so what I want to do now is tip this up and I'll just use my little digital angle meter to get it to uh, say actually seven or eight degrees I might go and just jump in on the computer and see if it'll tell me what it's supposed to do but when I measured it I, just, I came up with it was either seven or eight degrees on the edge like that and then run a little cut across there so it will sit better against it well that's bang on seven degrees so I'm jumping around between seven and seven point one but I can live with that uh, computer told me straight off the bat that it was indeed seven degrees so that's what I'm going to run with move the camera around the other side we can see a bit better alrighty how's that fit Finger in a bum. Alrighty, that'll do me. So now I'll have to uh, work out where to drill and tap that hole in there. Now I don't own a 2.05 millimeter tap, a uh, drill rather, which is what I need for two and a half mil tap. So two mil is gonna have to be. I think that'll do. Kind of scary tapping threads with these tiny little taps like this. A moment of truth, how well did I line that hole up? Not well by the looks of it. I dropped that screw. It's 
cockeyed. So I didn't get it in the right spot. Damn it. Well, that's a bummer, that is. That's a right, right bummer. But I have an idea. It's a bit rough. A little bit bush mechanic, but I think it might work. That might do the job. Anyway, so what I want to do now is set it up and machine this part off here, so it just comes across there like that. Alrighty, so uh, I'll just dress that up a little bit. I do want to blue it, uh, but I think we might uh, put in the lathe and give it a whirl first and then make sure it works alright. At this point in the video, I'd like to thank my patrons for the continued support. It's greatly appreciated. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link down in the description. You can sign up down there and toss me a couple of dollars every month. If you don't want to become a patron, there's always buy me a coffee and there's a QR code on the screen there. You can scan that or there's always that thanks button down there. Alright, if you've been enjoying this video up until this point, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a great big thumbs up. It really helps me. Now, you're looking at that and you're probably thinking, I thought you said you wanted to uh, test it and see if it needed any more machining before you blew it. Well, yeah, I did. But you may also notice that those center pop marks are not there anymore. It's because I got thinking about it and I thought, oh, I can't live with that. That just looks awful. So I remachined it and, uh, and I but spot on the way I wanted it this time and uh, and I blew it all up so I'll get it into a holder and we'll test it out but before I do that I think I'd better clean this machine up because it's just absolutely filthy well viewers I can confirm that there's nothing wrong with your eyes they're seeing exactly what they're seeing went a little bit crazy and decided to give it a proper clean up I raided the wife's uh, cleaning in the kitchen and used a bit of this stuff this magic clean Got all that greasy crap off everywhere. Clean it up nicely. So now it's time to give this tool a whirl. Right, I'll reposition this camera. Alrighty, so I've already uh, played a play with it and got it centered by facing it off. Give the whirl, see how we go turning with it. I also adjusted the uh, spindle bearings I mentioned it might have been in the last video that looked like they needed adjusting again, so I've adjusted them up. Make uh, a point two five cut just to try it out. a bit crappy actually and as you have uh, probably noticed I want to cut backwards so let's have a go at that as well point in the way that cuts I expected much better than that but anyway alrighty rather than just cop that on the chin and go oh well, I stuffed up made a shitty tool decided I uh, might put up a different tool I want to been using all along and uh, run it same spindle speed same feed same depth of cut see what happens
Well, that's not much better, to be honest with you. So, uh, I think I'm going to have to investigate what have I done. Uh, what's going on? So, I, I cleaned everything up and re-oiled everything, so I don't know. But anyway, so, uh, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching, and uh, like I said, if you enjoyed it, give it a great big thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.